Hi guys, welcome back to uh, the lab tutorial from Proteus WebFX School. We are going to continue talking about Houdini and V-Ray rendering engine. Uh, it is time to talk about uh, something more interesting and uh, something more related to visual effects. So we go to talk about uh, smoke and uh, uh, we're going to talk about a really simple scene, but uh, it, it can be really, really nice. So uh, it is interesting because we talk about the new pyro soap. So we are going to create something in a different way. And it will be nice to use also the new sparse uh, solver. So let's expand everything there and we go to create a really simple scene. So I have no animated mesh, so we can use a test geometry. So tap key, test geometry, and we go to use Craig. Let's wait for Craig creation. That's the model. So, you know, it's really simple and uh, we can call Craig smoke setup. So the animation is really simple, you know, uh, we can go to have 400 frames and that's really simple. We have this kind of animation. Okay, so I will try to have a really nice camera. This one is not bad, but we are going to animate this one. So let's go to create a new camera from this point of view. We have it there. Later we go to animate in a, in a different way. So let's say this one is the camera render. P to have the parameters. And then let's go to lock the camera. Okay. And uh, I like to have something different in the in the view so let's go there and we go for a 35 for local units and let's go a little bit higher for the aperture so let's see at the beginning what we have okay i like to stay near the creature at the beginning so um, let's go to see here what we have. Okay, so let's move the point of view. Let's say that at the beginning. Let's see. Okay, let's go to something like that. I like to have this kind of rotation. So you see that's what we have. So the final animation will be, let's say that this is animated with the Alt key. Then you see the creature is going there. So let's say that the camera is moving back when we are there. So let's say that we move the camera. Oh, sorry. That's the camera render. Okay, now we see the right camera. Okay. So we see the creature at the beginning, maybe just a little bit with a different rotation. So, okay. So that's the first key and then when the creature is there we are in a different position and we go to C hop so we should have something you see the camera is moving I think we can go so 
So, you know, we should have something like that. Okay, the creator is going to make this big boom there. So we are moving, we are moving, and we are checking what's going on there. And then maybe I like to stay a little bit nearest the creature as we go again on the other side and we go to see the creature from the top so we see how much is big And then we can double check. Okay. Okay. That's good to see this one in real time. Just to be sure that it's uh, it is working in a nice way. So you see the creature is going to peak and boom and then we go to move near the creature to see the smoke okay so maybe the only thing i like to change is that i like to go up there okay nice now we have the animation. I like to prepare a basic lighting. So we go to have a V-Ray uh, dome light. And uh, we can just pick maybe an image. We go for something really basic, nothing so special. So I am going to use uh, a texture I prepared for another curse so okay this one and let's say that we have a dome spherical let's wait for the preview that's the image and I like to have the lighting from the other side so let's say that we have something like that uh, we need an higher subdivision level and we should stay with something like that so control s and then in the output we go to have a v-ray render it is checking the license and then the v-ray ipr we don't need to have the um, global illumination because it's simple enough to to see this uh, this image and then we can directly say that the camera that needs to be rendered is the cam render and then in the render view let's go for cam render and then we can click over render it is opening the frame buffer and you see that's the scene really simple Okay, um, we can have maybe a plan. So let's go to create here a new geometry. So let's say geometry. And we go to call this one ground. And inside the ground, we can see the model there. We have a grid. Oh, sorry, not a group. We have a grid. Let's call it Popman, or maybe ground is the best thing. And it is bigger, let's say 50 meters by 50 meters. Okay, you see now it is updated. Okay, so that's the actual result. We we are not taking not taking care about the uh, the model there. Uh, we'll talk about uh, how it works in a few. So 
let's say that the camera the light dome is not visible so we say invisible so we have just the model uh, we don't need to know something more about the ground there so we go just to have a really huge scale let's say maybe 100 meters 100 meters that's all uh, the lighting is uh, we need less let's say maybe 0 02 or 0 01 so just a little bit and then we go to create a new light so let's go for a uh, um, a rectangle light and uh, we say that this one is the main we can move it in this way it needs to lead the entire scene so let's go to rotate this one um, we can do a scaling so let's say that a is 2 we have more uh, that is not visible we are going to move this one on the other side too and then we say that the subdivision is higher let's say maybe 64 to have enough quality and then we go to have a higher quality in the lighting. So let's say that this one stayed there. Uh, sorry. And then using the transform, we go to move it out. Okay, uh, back to the parameter. Let's go higher. okay so that's the main light we can have a new one so let's create light um, another rectangle and let's call fill light so we get to change the color let's go for something hot it is invisible and then we go to move it we can move it inside the viewport it is bigger let's say two meters two meters it's a really big panel and then it is out of the viewport so that's the actual result let's go for something more interesting like that okay and we got to have more energy maybe less okay and higher subdivision now the problem is let's go to check how it looks okay so I prefer to have this light higher so we have just the lighting and then we can have maybe okay and uh, main light let's go for something more an IT color and a little bit more energy and about about the light dome let's go a little bit up so we have a little bit more lighting and again 
more light on this one okay so you see it's just a fill light to have a little bit of lighting coming from the other side and then just to have something interesting let's try to have another fill light so we can copy this one and let's move it so we go to have this one on this side and it is essentially rotated so let's see when the creature is near the camera there okay uh, we can see how it looks so you see right camera we have the light on the other side and we have this light in front of us too so maybe this one can be a little bit less and maybe the first one will be higher power okay let's try with this setup simple but effective so um, uh, we can maybe think to have the ground that is not visible so we have just the creature or maybe it's really really dark so let's go in the material I have something I prepared before uh, we go to have a new material so V-Ray material something really basic let's call it ground and it's essentially a black color uh, so that's the ground let's say to use the ground color and then we can decide from the material if we like to have a little bit you see of information about the illumination okay um, so let's go to prepare a simulation uh, simulation would be really simple uh, maybe we can create later a material for the object there uh, just in a few so let's go back to the object let's say that this one is the setup for lighting and cameras so this one is lighting and cameras let's choose a color okay back to the setup for our creature we can stop the preview and work directly on this mesh we have to do different things I have to let's say that here we have also a volume extrude let's say five meters just to have something and we get to have an output there and this is out ground let's change the icon okay and the color of the icon and that's done okay so back in the smoke setup so let's say this is crack char uh, just for the moment you know that there the animation range is linked with the uh, string ff so we can say delete channel we go to use the first frame just to see how it is looking the simulation and then we go to play with the right simulation okay uh, we need some more stuff uh, I'd like to be able to move the character out of there so let's say that this one is the out char mesh 
we go for the Saigon and about the color let's say that this one is green okay nice then let's go to uh, create the pyro search so we go for a pyro source and let's say to pyro okay um, we have to play a little bit with this setup uh, actually we don't need so we have essentially to say to not use the input points we have so let's say to do a surface cutter and then we go to have a lower particle separation we have 10 centimeters let's say 0 2 so we have a lot of points you see it is not bad but later we go to have something more interesting and we need an attribute uh, we need to create an attribute for this point so let's create a new attribute and let's call it density it will be the density of the smoke we are going to create okay uh, now I'd like to create some um, rasterization to see the volume so let's go to have a volume rasterize attributes because we are going to use the attributes to rasterize the volume so let's say density to volume and it is really simple uh, we have to say which is the attributes we are going to use to create the volume let's say density okay you see we have the volume is it's really low quality actually it's uh, the voxel size is 10 centimeters so it's really high uh, it will be really useful to pick the uh, particle separation from there so let's do copy parameters and let's link there with the past relative so you see now it is linked to the pyro value and it is 0, 0, 002 and the other things we have to do uh, that's all that's all we can use it so next step is to use the pyro salt it's really really nice and uh, it's really fast so let's go for a pyro solver and we have to connect the volume to say what's going on pyro solver let's call it smoke uh, we got to touch anything so we can use it there play and nothing happen because we have to say how to use it because actually we need to say which is the um, the temperature because without temperature we can't do anything so in the pyro solver you see that some stuff are really similar to the pyro solver we use usually we have the sourcing actually it's creating four operation but we need essentially just two operation we need the density and we need the uh, the temperature so we can remove this one remove this temperature there and let's say that there the source volume is always the density because we have just the density sorry it's brought in a wrong way okay and the target speed is temperature so we are going to use the first one to create the second one and we say to add this value to the value we are going to create so we have just two uh, information but we have obviously to show this one okay it is working we have the same problem we had before uh, the quality is really low you see and that's due to the setup simulation we have there the voxel size is 10 centimeters so we can do the same so we can use this one copy parameter and we go to link there past relative in this case let's press enter when we go to simulate we have the right scaling okay uh, quality is really poor we have to tweak a lot of stuff actually so first of all um, let's create a different looking for the simulation there 
So we get to play with a solver and uh, also with the looks. So the first thing we do is to change the the setup. Sorry, it's okay. So we have to move to the solving, and we go in the. We have no flames. We need just to play with the shape. Uh, in the shape, actually, it's uh, it is going to um, to have a really fast dissipation. I like to have a slower dissipation. So let's go down to zero two. You see, it's going to be a little bit better. Then let's go lower to zero one. Actually, it's going to use the. Uh, it is rising really, really so much. So we go to play with our rising. Uh, you see that we have no um, voxel space. We have not the grid because it's going to use the. You can see there in the solving simulation. And I like to show you in the advanced. You see that you, it is going to use the sparse solving. So that's why we have no need to play with a with a voxel grid. Um, so back to the shaping, but before in the simulation, I like to make it uh, rising less. So the first thing you have to touch is the balance scale. The balance is the force that is going to make rising the smoke due to the temperature. So let's start going really down. I like to have it slowly going up. It's better, but maybe we can go a little bit lower. Let's say it's zero one. Okay, you see it's going up slowly and I really love it. Okay, nice. So, um, let's see whatever else we can do uh, and the simulation is not a problem everything is done in the right way uh, about the flames we didn't need anything so we can just essentially play with uh, with uh, sh uh, the shape so back in the shape let's use a disturbance uh, here we can play with the parameter, so let's see. It is adding a, a disturbance to the simulation. Uh, we need to double check how it is looking. Uh, so let's play with the parameter. And I like to rise up the cutoff. So we are going to have it more visible. And then we can leave the other parameters by default. So just a little bit. And maybe before we go to simulate something, let's go higher to 0 0.65. So it is adding a little bit of disturbance all around and it will be more visible when we are going to simulate at an higher resolution. So, uh, let's go travel so uh, turbulence. Let's go to see also the turbulence parameters. Okay, let's see what happens if we go with a really high turbulence. Okay, you see we have a lot of disturbance. So we can play with the scaling. Actually, it's uh, the sweeter is one meters. We go lower. Let's say zero six, so sixty centimeters, and then we leave all the parameters by default. Maybe we can add just a little bit of levels to have a little bit more uh, details all around. If you like, you can also visualize what's going on during the simulation. By the way, 
actually we just need to simulate um, it's really high so we can go down in the usage and let's see with an eye of quality what's going on so one centimeter and half you know the monster is not so high it's not so big but you see now we have a lot of details okay uh, it is still rising really high so uh, if we like to add some forces to the scene we can do it it's not a problem so to do something like that you have just essentially to move inside the pyro solver and you see that there we have something to help us to understand how we have to do and it is saying that if we like to use the gas micro solver we have to wire it inside there you know I like to do something I like to have a gas damp and with the damp we are going to have the um, the smoke rising slower let's go a little bit more near and let's go to change the value of the gas damp and we go to double this one so you see that there obviously we see the the destructor and it's uh, it is working as the previous one so it is just something you have not to see okay you see that it's going up slower than before And that's nice by the way I like to add more uh, turbulence so to do something like that we need another uh, gas micro solver so we need a merge okay and I'm going to use the gas turbulence okay perfect and the gas turbulence is going to add some turbulence to our simulation but I like to create something really little and this one is 65 centimeters so let's go for something like 15 and back in the simulation you see that we have more disturbance over the surface okay back there and I like to make it more visible so 025 and then maybe just a little bit more turbulence to have more details back there let's play okay you see that we have a lot of turbulence it will be really nice uh, we need obviously an higher resolution for the simulation by the way let's go there and about the look we can change essentially the color in the look if we like so for example we can use a gray smoke here you have also the density so you see you can make it higher density or lower density by the way we, we are going to render it in a different way so we don't need anything special for the moment so uh, whatever else uh, we have maybe we can add a little bit of wind so to do something like that we go for a gas wind okay the gas wind needs to be tweaked so we have to play with a scale actually it's really uh, fast I think by the way I like to move it by it over the x-axis negative so minus one and I like to move it also behind the creature so minus one over the z-axis let's go to see the simulation maybe to be really fast 
let's go here to 25 Okay, you see it's moving behind, but it's really fast. So we go lower, maybe 10 times slower. So just a little bit of wind. Okay, so you see that we have the smoke as the, in the previous test. And then it's going to move also Maybe it can be a little bit higher, just a little bit. So let's go back there and let's say 15. Okay, the forces are, everything is set in the right way. Uh, it is interesting how the simulation is working, but you know, uh, I like to have the smoke just in some areas. And to do something like that, we have to randomize the attributes over the surface before the uh, rasterization. And we can do it with an attribute noise. Okay, uh, let's call it noisy density. Um, by default, you see it's set to CD, so for the color, we need to play with our density, so let's change to 1D, because we have just one value, it is not a vector, it is a float, and then we say that this one is animated, so let's see, okay, you see that we have some kind of variation, but I like to make it more and more visible, so um, let's say that the element size is lower, 25 centimeters. Okay, scaling seems better, but we have to take care about the quality more. So let's go for uh, a remapping. Okay, now it's better than before. The scaling is right, the pulse is right, we can make more contrast rising down this one let's go really low and let's go really low over this area too so you see we have some precise areas where we are playing with it and then we can play just a little bit with our lacunarity okay something like that and we can have a little bit less roughness we don't need so much roughness okay so you see the smoke is created just on some areas over the body if you like to have it slower you have to change the pulse duration actually it's one second you can have for example five seconds so you see it's slower than before Maybe we can do something in the middle, so 2.5. Back there. And let's go to see how this looking. You see that it's going to simulate the smoke that is moving. Okay. At this time, maybe we can do again faster. Let's say 1.5. Okay, uh, we need to uh, have the creator back to the animation. So string FF. And now we have the creator that is moving. We can move to our camera. So that's what's going on. And you see it, it is starting to be interesting. And obviously, actually, it's really low quality, so let's stop. Okay, 
Um, let's go for something lower quality. And then it's time to play a little bit with some collision. So we need some collision with the ground. Maybe we can have some objects over the top to have some collision. So the smoke will will have different shapes. And then we can add collision with itself. Okay, you see it's nice and interesting. Okay, so um, let's say that we have a new output there and we can use this one for the output if we like smoke solver if we like to have the possibility to render it with a standard rendering engine we can do it so let's prepare for it too and let's use the index one Okay, you know that there we have the volume collision. So we have to say which is the collision there. So let's create something more clean there. And let's say that we have some meshes over the top, maybe some structure. So let's create a box. And we go to right up this one. And the scale. Essentially, we can change it there. So let's say that it's more little, it's something like that, but it is longer. Oh, sorry. This one will be not visible in rendering. It's just to, you know, to create something inside the scene. Okay. So then we need the transform. Uh, we get to create something in a really simple way. Uh, so we, we don't need so much copies. Uh, let's say that we go for height. Or maybe we can see the model. Uh, so this is the first one. And this one. It's going to move this one. So we say that everyone is at 1.25. So then merge. And we have the first one and the second one. And then uh, we can use another transform. And essentially we can have a new merge. So let's disconnect everything. And this one is connected. This one is connected. And then we say two meters send off because it is double. Okay. And if needed, we can do the same, but you know, we don't need so much space, so we can do something like that. It's not a problem. Um, the interesting thing is that, uh, you know, these objects will be not visible in rendering, we don't need it, uh, but I like to create the volume. And to create the, the volume for the collision, we need to create a BDB from polygons. Okay, in the BDB for polygon from polygons, we can use the same resolution. So let's go for this one. So right mouse button, copy parameters, and we go in the box and past relative so the resolution is linked for everything okay and that's all uh, we have to do nothing special so let's say to vdb and then we go to have a new out there to export the information out so let's say out volume collision you can do uh, this kind of network for everything and that's all okay so we don't need anything in render we go there and inside the collision we have just to pick the data from the output so let's say that we have an object merge and we call it merge collision 
volume. We get to pick the uh, the object we just created for the box there out, and then we have just to merge this one there. If we go to simulate, obviously we have the collision with the objects we have on the top. So actually it's not so visible, maybe we can move down the object because I think it's, uh, it's present but you know maybe it's better to move it down. No, okay, it is working because you know it is down. Okay, uh, so it's not a problem, so let's remove this one. Uh, something interesting, you see that we have no smoke there, it's not visible because we have to export the data to see the information out also for the uh, standard mantra rendering engine. Uh, by the way, I like to have the collision with itself, so essentially, you know, it's simple to think about it. So if we do uh, BDB from polygons there, okay for the Craig mesh essentially we are creating the surface for the creature there we use the same resolution so copy parameters and paste relative and then we go to use a merge so we are merging the object on the top and connect to this one Okay, we have a problem with the position because we are going to do the merge but we move the box there so we have to transform this node so let's copy this one and set to zero and then we can make a transform there and we do to make the same transformation we done before okay perfect so essentially if we do there you have the right one, so the collision is with this one. Okay, uh, let's go to see the Pyro Solver in action and save and go to play. Okay, let's see. I just looking, uh, it is nice. But you know, uh, it is not clear if it is working perfectly. It seems yes, because you see uh, the, the smoke seems colliding with the surface, but essentially, you know, we have to make some kind of uh, preview using an higher quality. So let's do maybe just the test at 0, 2. just maybe some frames and we can go near with the with the camera but it seems working okay so you see that with five gigabytes we have less frames in memory but it is going really nice I like to make some tweaks to the volume rasterization with the noisy uh, random value we created before so I like maybe just to change a little bit this one and maybe a little bit this one so the area are a little bit bigger you know okay and maybe let's make it again faster so We have a lot of areas that are changing in a really fast way. Uh, sorry, let's stop. Okay, let's make this one visible. So you see it's really fast. Okay. So uh, now the main problem is that uh, let's go for a low resolution. Uh, let's go for a simulation. Let's simulate maybe just some frames. 
And then the important thing is that we need to render this one. So let's stop. Okay. Uh, we go back to the render view and render the preview. Okay, we have nothing. So first of all, we go to create back. Let's say that this one, uh, we have a new geometry and this one is the crack render. And here we go to have an object merge Let's call it merge crack. And we go to pick the crack model, crack char mesh, the output we created before. So now we have the mesh inside our scene. And that's nice. Uh, then we need to see the smoke. The problem is that the power soap needs to uh, move out the information about the smoke and essentially at the moment it's not able uh, so uh, we can do something really simple let's go inside the pyro and uh, uh, the pyro solver we are going to say what is that needs to be exported so we like to move data to V-Ray and we have two ways uh, if we go to cache this one that is the most simple way. So what I mean is that usually if we like to see the simulation, we have essentially to go there and say that this one is not visible. This one is the collision. Okay. And then we go to have a new mesh and this one is the smoke. So geometry let's call it smoke and inside we go to have an object merge merge smoke seam and we go to pick the output from the simulation the solver we can stop this one and move to the view okay you see that now let's go there we have the simulation and then we have to say that, for example, we go to cache this one, so file cache. And let's call it cache smoke sim. And here you will be able to cache the simulation. And if you like, if you are using a mantra, you can use the pyro post process node. That's really nice. Here you have the possibility to control directly all the information, for example, the density uh, or the, um, the smoke density, the color, the flames and the shadow density so we can have more shadows. So you have complete control about the look. The problem is that uh, this one is not rendable by uh, V-Ray. So uh, in this case, uh, V-Ray it's not going to use the cache but it is going to uh, convert everything to via VR scene file format so it needs to do some process to play with this data so the thing we can do is to help him uh, exporting the VDB data from the pyro so to do something like that we can do let's say that we go here and we set the export to convert to VDB. And then here we have the output and there file cache. And let's call it out to VDB. We can change the name to VDB. Right mouse button there. Uh, let's say delete. Let's say that we go to solve just 40 frames with a load from disk, control S, and go to export. It is saving, you see it's really fast. 
Okay. So uh, in our case now we have the smoke. So this time the smoke is uh, a different cache. So let's say that here we go to have a file. Let's call it load pdb. Or maybe we can directly let's remove this one and let's pick this one control C control V so you see we are inside it and we have the cache okay so this is renderable so if we go inside the render view and we see render now we have to say how to render this data and uh, it is really simple. We go inside the material and let's create a new material. So V-Ray volumes, volume create. Let's call it smoke. So our object there can be rendered using the smoke. Okay. Now you see it, it is loading the information uh, in uh, our simulation. If you like, you can directly, for example, uh, let's go back in the material. If you like to do something more uh, precise and something that needs uh, can work in a better way, you can go there and create a material output. So let's say that this one is the smoke volume. It's connected to the volume and this one is the smoke. Then to our objects, we have to say to use the other one. And back in the material, so we can choose this one. And here you are able to play with the shader so we can say uh, we have no fire so you can uh, remove all the information there because you don't need it uh, we can go for a darker color let's say it's 01 01 01 and uh, let's go for a ray traced so it's really high quality let's see what happens if we have Okay, a little bit less visibility. Uh, let's see. Okay, you know, it's working really nice. And let's go back to the to the one. Now it should be okay. It's the same as in our simulation. Maybe we can go a little bit down. Let's get to have. Okay, we have everything. Everything is visible, so it's working nicely. Uh, we can go for a darker gray, so it's a really dark smoke. Okay, and control S. So if you like to, oh, we can add the collision with the ground too. So let's stop there. And as we done for the collision, we need a VDB, so copy there. Let's go in the ground. Let's connect, this one can be removed and connect to a VDB. It's really big. Um, so inside the simulation we can add a new one so let's go for an object merge and this one merge ground pick the ground okay so we have this one too Let's see if it works. Okay, perfect. So back to the first frame 
and if needed we can do there save let's export again this frame and we can see the result in a few okay it's ready so let's go back in the smoke okay now we have the collision also with the ground uh, there is something wrong there okay it is a glitch I mean uh, yes I think it's a glitch uh, let's say that we have the crack okay you see we have still the smoke visible okay don't worry about it you know it is just a problem of rendering because uh, of previewing viewport because if we go to make a preview you see it's working perfectly if we go at frame 40 you see that it's working uh, uh, in a really nice way um, I think we can go to the material just to play a little bit with a look So in the smoke volume, let's see there if we like to play, you see, a little bit with the, you have the possibility to control the density there if you like and you have a complete control over the final look We have to find the right position for our well. visibility because I like to have you see an higher density uh, over the top there. By the way, uh, you have the possibility you see also to have different setup. So if you like you can create something strange as you can see there you have some strange variation in the density so you can add a little bit of detail all over And let's say this one is zero and zero. And that's just if you like to have it. So we can decide to remove it or to have it. And it's going to change how the simulation play. By the way, uh, this needed to be visible with a, a more complex simulation. So let's go back and let's say to use a better quality. So let's go to see the simulation with an higher quality. Uh, let's go in the viewport. okay uh, it seems better let's go at frame 40 and let's go to render it 
So that's the actual result. It's really nice, I think. Let's go in the shader again, just for a moment. Let's remove the opacity ramp and let's remove the scaling. So that's the smoke. Let's go to play without the auto scaling, just the opacity. So this one can be removed. So delete, we can use the space. Uh, sorry, the backspace. Okay, so that's the uh, the smoke we have at the moment. We can change, you see, the density. Let's say we have one, sorry, one, and it is zero, one, zero, two. I like to have a little bit of smoke over the body, you know. 0, 3 ok and let's see we can have the density going lower faster so you see we have this kind of effects Okay, it is really dense, really, uh, really, really nice, I think. Um, that's all, I think. It is nothing so complex, actually. So, you know, in this way, you are able to render really uh, nasty smoke effects over Creature. And we, we can just play maybe with the lighting. So let's go back to the output. Uh, sorry, the objects so object and let's go in the main light let's set it more visible okay and let's see if we the light dome is set to off okay we can have it a little bit and uh, i think it's it, it is nice okay so the ground Let's go to the let's go to see if we have something that is going to be not good. So we need a new output. So out and this one is one. It's an output. And let's call it out ground mesh and the color can be different okay uh, and we can use this one so it's visible in rendering nice okay essentially it is done I like maybe just to go to a darker color for the ground. So you see it's uh, just something really, really dark. Okay, let's go for zero, zero, 001. Mm, just to to see how it is looking let's see if it is nice with a little bit of let's say that we have 128 and uh, a little bit of glossiness and this one obviously it is darker I like just to have a little bit or refraction reflection sorry 
nothing special and let's go higher there just to be sure okay and save that's done so guys i will prepare a preview uh, with the rendering so you will see uh with the with a tutorial also the final render in the in the post okay have a nice day and thanks for watching bye bye